Imagine constructing a building while demolishing the building while also lifting a large segment of that building all at the same time. Oh, and maybe I should mention that this is happening on a 20,000 square foot lot in one of the busiest places in the world. This is the $2.5 billion TSX Broadway, and it's one of the most interesting and impressive engineering feats in New York City history, which, based on what I've covered in the past, really means something. This project takes structural and creative engineering to whole new levels. Well, I guess technically it's not on what you would conventionally think about as Times Square, but it's right down the street at the southeastern corner of Broadway and 47th. The building originally opened as the Palace Theatre, constructed in 1913. Upon its completion, the Palace Theatre quickly became one of the world's most renowned venues, hosting some of the greatest performers of its time. It remained relatively unbothered until 1987, when an Embassy Suites hotel was constructed above the theater. The New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission designated the theater as an interior landmark in 1987, requiring the developer to build around it instead of demolishing it. The hotel was built above and around the theater's original auditorium and stage house, supported by four 145-foot steel and concrete super columns placed to the west and east of the auditorium. The 43-story hotel featured 460 suites and nearly obscured the theater's facade behind 10,000 square feet of billboards for the first 120 feet of its height. In 2015, the organization in charge of the Palace Theater announced another renovation along with a new development on the site. The plan included renovating the theater and raising its auditorium by 30 feet to accommodate ground floor retail space. Despite concerns from preservationalists, the Landmark Preservation Commission approved the plan in November of 2015. The New York City Council approved the plan in June 2018, officially allowing the redevelopment to proceed. But work needed to be done before lifting the theater, and here's where the engineering begins to come in. The first step of this massive project was demolishing 75% of the build. But why didn't they just demolish the whole thing? Changes in New York City's zoning regulation caused the proposed building to surpass the maximum floor area ratio permitted for the site. However, zoning rules allow new development to match the floor space of their predecessors regardless of these limits, provided that 25% of the original structure is retained. The issue here is that the old building is, well, old, and wasn't designed for the major shift in load distribution that it was undergoing. On top of this, engineers were digging into the ground beneath the building to set up for the work that lied ahead. Doing this meant they had to be extremely cautious, considering they were quite literally chipping away at the previous build's bedrock. Palace Theater first had to be detached from its foundation, and then the bottom was supported by a layer of 5 feet of reinforced concrete. Ultimately, the structure that needed to be moved weighed approximately 14 million pounds and took a total of 34 custom-made steel posts, hydraulically controlled by a machine described as a hybrid between a structural steel shoring post and a hydraulic jack. Kind of like a giant puzzle being removed, approximately 30 feet of the superstructure above the theater was removed, allowing for an open space for the theater to fit perfectly into. And after the hotel above was completely demolished, the theater was finally ready for what some called the greatest show it would ever be a part of. After five years of meticulous planning, the ascension of the Palace Theater began on January 7th of 2022. The 34 hydraulic jacks were strategically positioned to lift the theater the required 30 feet. The actual lifting progress took about four months at an approximate rate of a quarter inch per hour. Safety and precision were paramount. The theater was equipped with sensors, vibration monitors, and GPS systems, and underwent thorough inspections, both internally and externally, after each inch of elevation. As the theater was being lifted, the new tower was was slowly built up around it. The building actually topped off in February of 2022, which meant that the theater was only partially lifted at the time. After finally reaching the designated height, the Palace Theater underwent a $50 million renovation. This included restoring its original ornate plasterwork, adding sound insulation, updating the mechanical and electrical systems, and modernizing the backstage areas. The goal was to blend historical preservation with modern functionality, ensuring the theater's continued use for future generations. So now let's talk about what's actually going on inside the building. To do this, let's look at the building from the ground up. 
As mentioned, the purpose for raising the theater up 30 feet was to create multiple new floors of high-end retail space. Of course, easily accessible retail space near Times Square should be a surprise to no one, considering the amount of foot traffic in the area. I'll break down the numbers on how much money this move alone will make in just a minute, and it's almost mind-blowing. Right above this retail space, though, is where things really differentiate from the norm. On the main street facing side is a stage that emerges from the world's largest operable LED doors. These doors, weighing an impressive 86,000 pounds each, are a feat of engineering on their own. The screen that the doors are located on is 18,000 square feet and wraps around the skyscraper directly across from Times Square's red steps. At 9 stories tall, the mega spectacular display system employs an 8mm pitch with a resolution of 3500 by 7400 pixels, making it the highest resolution display in the history of Times Square. As an interesting aside, when the LED screen on the building's facade was illuminated for the first time in January of 2023, members of the public were allowed to buy 15 second advertisement slots for $40 each. Soon after this went into effect, the offer attracted attention from all types of people, with more than 200,000 users downloading the app within the first six months. Because of this, many of the slots were completely booked, both through the day and night. So was this 15 seconds of fame really worth $40? The venue was officially tested last year for the first time, with a concert headed by Post Malone. Behind the stage sits a backstage 150-seat venue for concerts and other events. Of course, on the back half of the building will still sit the Palace Theater, and some people have spoken out over the past few years, stating the theater shouldn't be covered and hidden as it represents a key piece in New York City history. Above the stage and theater will sit a multi-story entertainment area. The 10th floor will contain two balconies and a restaurant, while the 11th floor will be the hotel lobby. The hotel will be Hilton's first ever Tempo branded location, which will have a different feel from some of the other high-end Hilton hotels. This location is made up of 661 rooms, which will feature direct views of Times Square and floor-to-ceiling windows. I tried doing research on the hotel prices, but since the hotel hasn't officially opened yet, they haven't made any of the figures public. And because I don't want to forget about it, the top floor contains penthouse-like suites that are designated for both performers and brand partners. The total cost of the construction and renovation of the entire development is estimated to be around $2.5 billion. While this does sound like a significant amount of money, this price can be largely attributed to the project's location. Annual retail rent in Times Square can be close to $2,000 per square foot, which is some of the highest in the world. This means the average sized retail store in the US at 10,000 square feet would cost an absurd $20 million in annual rent here. And given that the retail space created at TSX Broadway is around 75,000 square feet, it starts to make a lot more sense as to why developers would go through all of the trouble to lift the theater. This project was both challenging and interesting, but shows how a solution can be presented if enough creative thought and engineering goes into something. These are the exact type of projects that I like covering because they're equally entertaining and educational. So just in case you feel like grabbing some hydraulic jacks and lifting your house, well, you could say you got something out of the video. If you have any suggestions for future video or feedback to provide on this video, please let me know in the comments. Either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.